Aaron, can you uh, maybe introduce yourself to the listeners who don't know about you and your organization? Sure. Uh, my name is Arun Krishnan. I work in Climate Policy Initiative. Uh, CPI is an analysis and advisory organization uh, that works in the intersection of climate and finance. Uh, globally, we are known for um, a flagship report that we do. It's called the uh, Global Landscape of uh, Climate Finance, uh, a report which, we, which traces the sources and uses of climate finance. Uh, it's a widely cited report. Uh, individually, I take care of a program called uh, the Global Innovation Lab for Climate Finance. Mm -hmm. I, I head the India chapter of that. It's a it's an incubator for innovative climate finance ideas. So we are trying to grow climate finance instruments in India, the innovation in that, and I head that initiative. Great. Uh, global goal of adaptation is something that's being spoken a lot in the climate negotiations here in COP. Uh, so can you maybe define a little bit about you know what global goal of adaptation is adaptation is uh, in the context of addressing climate change sure um, in the Paris agreement they decided that you know adaptation is something which needs to have goals mm -hmm. and therefore the global goals on adaptation was bound but the action on it has been slow over the years mm -hmm. the action picked up pace uh, when the you know uh, the Glasgow and Sharm el Sheikh events happened uh, so they set up a Glasgow Sharm el Sheikh working group, mm. which has met a number of times in the last two years, and which uh, which is about to culminate in uh, the uh, announcement made in COP28. Uh, so the, the 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 draft declaration that you see uh, is a result of the work which has been done uh, by this group and of course other uh, groups as well. Uh, so basically. The Paris Agreement identifies that adaptation is important and you require certain approaches to it, certain frameworks, financing and so on. So how do we implement that, operationalize that? That is the, uh, that is what the global goal on adaptation is about. So, um, but the announcement that has been made falls short. Uh, I will explain in your subsequent qu uh, questions, yes. but yeah, that's, that's the long and short of it. Yes, I mean, uh, one thing that uh, many people might also think is, you know, uh, when you talk about climate change mitigation and adaptation, two major components, uh, mitigation is something that is very measurable and, you know, uh, we have stock take that is happening right now in Dubai, which also will address it. Uh, whereas adaptation, you know, measuring of adaptation is something that people struggle with because adaptation can mean, you know, uh, like building walls so that uh, see erosion doesn't happen uh, or you know building uh, climate resilient infrastructure and things like these how do you measure it uh, yeah so I think the it is measurable right let's get that clear mm. the problem is we are not uh, defined it mm. so only if we define it can we measure it mm. right so mitigation projects being prospective you have defined it and therefore you are saying that you'll be able to measure it but adaptation projects are the right here and right now how do you measure it? Uh, so then comes the question of defining what the adaptation is and the taxonomy, uh, the financial taxonomy that goes with it, right? So that is something, again, this um, uh, GGA has not really defined, right? So, mm -hmm. and there needs to be more work done on it so that it can be defined and only if you define, can you measure it? Mm -hmm. So I'll give a very practical example a uh, measurable thing is temperature, right? Temperature, yes. humidity, yes. dry bulb, wet bulb, temperature and so on, right? These are measurable things. So we can very well say that human habitation is possible only at this temperature. Beyond this, you require, uh, you know, passive cooling or mechanical cooling uh, or uh, below this, you require heating and so on, right? So that is something which is measurable. And mm -hmm. al also, you can take measures of the ambient temperature and mm -hmm. say that, okay, this is not fit for human uh, habitation. We need to adapt. Mm -hmm. Right, so like like this, you can come up with metrics. Mm -hmm. uh, the human, the limit of human imagination is unlimited. Yeah. Um, but you need to define it first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, agree, agree. I mean, even in mitigation, you know, you can't measure unless you know carbon equivalents or carbon dioxide equivalents. You measure. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so what are uh, you know some of the key challenges that individuals and communities face uh, when adapting to adapting to impacts of climate change? I think, uh, you know, we need to look at it from a very uh, human-centric perspective. 
or human or you know even animal centric perspective or crop centric perspective for that matter that um, going back to your previous question again one of the problems is because we are looking at it from a project perspective mm -hmm. rather than from a human perspective mm -hmm. right so now when you shift the focus to human perspective then the challenges become pretty clear right so mm -hmm. what are the challenges the vulnerable communities face i'll take the recent example of the chennai floods yeah. right uh, obviously i mean it's a uh, once in a uh, i wouldn't say a once in a 50 year or 100 year because when you look at the numbers mm -hmm. it looks like it's once in every 5 years yeah. these kind of uh, mm -hmm. heavy rain and subsequent flooding events okay so of course uh, you face challenges because of that right now how do you design around that that mm -hmm. is the question how mm -hmm. does government and private sector and individuals respond and design around that is the question okay so here the measurable metric is uh, let's say 300 mm of rainfall or above every day in a day is un makes it uninhabitable yeah. right so then you design a storm water drain around that you design nature based solutions around that and so mm -hmm. on okay um yeah so heat uh, water rising sea levels you know uh, desertification all of these are challenges which vulnerable communities and almost all humans face yeah. to be honest yeah so uh, you know i have a two part question how can uh, technology play a role and what is the role of finance in supporting these technologies okay two big questions so <laughs> i'll start with technology okay so um, you know a lot of responses to adaptation requires improvisation i mean we call jugad in india but uh, maybe we need to structure it a little bit better um okay so let's say uh, there is a slum in india what do they do i mean they literally have a roof over their head and the roof is made of thin sheets or mm -hmm. uh, pvc panels or whatever right now uh, you know how they, with increasing heat obviously a thin sheet uh will not uh, is not a comfortable place to live in yeah uh so then you need to adapt and maybe change the thin to pvc right mm -hmm. so or maybe change it to some other material mm -hmm. so the material which is yet to be ma mass manufactured mm -hmm. okay that is a technological change technology does not mean creating uh, you know mm -hmm. uh, silicon chips which are less than 5 <laughs> nanometer it means mm -hmm. it it means you you create something new which may be cost effective or it also means you scale up solutions which are right now very artisanal mm -hmm. right um an example of that can be um of course this is not uh, relating to climate it's more about uh, it can relate to climate but the amount of plastic waste in india is increasing or globally it is increasing now there are some approaches in india where you convert the plastic waste into uh fuel for a power station refuse derived fuel they call it or maybe you mix it with bitumen and you lay the roads mm -hmm. but these approaches they are technological in increments and improvements but they are very artisanal in nature mm -hmm. right so you, you don't find them scaling up mm -hmm. and that is where our problem is that we need to i think in india a technological approach will probably be less about newer materials newer technologies but more about scaling up existing solutions which are known to work mm -hmm. okay the cool roofs policy of telangana is an example you had the solution it is quite cheap maybe there may be other paints which are improve, uh, uh, which are invented which can cool a you know a house better but right now we have something but how do you scale it up mm -hmm. and that is where the finance aspect of it comes into picture because um you know finance is also about piloting approaches but it's also about scaling up mm. and making things more accessible to people okay so uh, we require an adaptation does not give you a market rate of return uh, it necessarily has to be about government funding it mdbs at a concessional rate uh, philanthropies and so on right funding approaches uh, creating innovative uh, financial instruments across the board be it debt equity insurance what have you and scaling it up mm -hmm. right and a good thing about scaling up things is that maybe if you scale it up it might become bankable in the, in the, in the sense that you don't require con uh, 
concessional finance anymore it can uh, you know uh, maybe it can operate at a at a normal rate of interest right mm-hmm. uh, uh, the, the example can be the cool roofs policy let's say for example a specific type of paint is used for a cool roof yeah. or a specific type of tile is used for a cool roof mm-hmm. initially the technology co- the cost will be higher yeah. right but as you scale up scale up scale up the incremental cost reduces mm-hmm. and therefore the cost for consumers also reduces yeah, we have seen that with led bulbs right? led bulbs is a perfect example yeah perfect example it's a good example because of multiple factors i mean obviously when people adopt more led bulbs the rate of the bulb comes down the yeah. price of the bulb comes down but that requires a initial government push yeah, yeah. and that is what the indian government did very well yeah. right so they uh, they created that push so that the adapt adaptation becomes wider mm. and therefore the price comes down and then market forces take over mm. from there there mm. onwards so do you think uh, there are any other uh, you know examples where you think that government can push for adaptation measure like you said you know i think even for cool roofs the government can push uh, just like you know to scale it up what are any other examples that you can think of yeah. which you think will so the government scale? has to push in everything right mm-hmm. um, the cool roof policy Uh, so let's let's start with different sectors i will i will lay out different sectors uh, let's start with uh, you know built up uh, area the real estate sector commercial real estate so some of the approaches there can be materials building materials so india already has a tradition of using indigenous materials uh, materials which are local uh, and now we also have these uh, hollow bricks and so on which are which provide good insulation so the question is to scale it up right hollow brick solution has already been scaled up but other so- solutions can be scaled up you bring in aspects into the design code okay which is something which the government can do mm. in order to increase the adoption of passive cooling mm. another cheap technology which is available today is to embed water pipes within the flooring within the walls mm. and then you circulate gray water through, through them mm. okay so that it absorbs uh the radiant uh, heat the, the the heat basically not the radiant heat but mm-hmm. the 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 con- con- conventional heat mm. uh so here uh, the 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 it it, it kills two two uh, you know birds in one stone so to speak gray water reuse is there water is being reused and the cooling also happens most of the heating of a building happens because the building itself absorbs the heat yeah okay so when you reduce that then your uh, obviously your uh, cooling bills come down okay so built up area requires material approaches it requires these engineering approaches as well and of course you have mechanical cooling and mechanical cooling uh, the government has to set standards in terms of acs yeah. but also bring in district cooling mm. which you see in cop 28 in dubai you yeah. see district cooling deployed in a massive way yeah. right so those approaches should be uh, there in india as well because they bring in more efficiency and so on so that's a built up area let me quickly cro- go through the other areas as well agriculture the government of course has to do research and it is doing research on drought resistant seeds yes. it also has to bring in you know as a change in consumption patterns and change in cropping patterns from water intensive crops like paddy and uh, sugarcane to millets yes. and so on yes. right and also in terms of uh, city urban design as well as well as afforestation drives etc <coughs> you need to create uh, you need to um, use native species which consume less water mm-hmm. right uh, the opposite of that is eucalyptus trees right mm-hmm. eucalyptus trees are while they are very nice they give a mm-hmm. eucalyptus oil and all but they are extremely water intensive yeah. right so you should not be planting or maybe you should also be removing eucalyptus tree and replacing with uh, species which consume less water mm. and so this is agriculture uh, let's come to the urban areas you have nature based solutions it can be for urban it can be for rural areas as well where you have water water bodies which have to be preserved and they also bring down the temperature in terms of uh, the ambient area in the in terms of the surrounding areas uh, then you have Uh, uh wetlands which act as a sponge mm. to remove flooding to reduce flooding right so there are other nature based approaches as well which the government has to encourage um and also in urban areas uh heat adaptation is important um, heat is i mean uh, the temperatures are soaring uh, yeah. the vulnerable people are being in, uh, impacted 
So the government has to bring in programs, financing solutions, etc., to reduce the impact of this, right? Uh, think about a slum area where you can have a common area where which is air conditioned yeah. through solar panels or something, right? Mm -hmm. So that is an adaptation approach, mm -hmm. and uh, you this reduces the uh, people in the slums from installing air conditioning, yeah. which might be air conditioning is no longer a luxury these yeah, days, right? Yeah, it has become a necessity, okay. and and even for the most vulnerable, yes. right? So well, if the government does common areas like this, it might be useful. Um, so like this, there are you know, multiple areas in which you can think of adaptation and the government de definitely has an important role to play in these. Yeah, definitely. So, um, the text that has been released today morning, uh, the GGA text, uh, Global Goal of Adaptation text, um, what are some of the shortcomings? I mean, it's been a long time, like you said, you know, it took over two years for us to come till here. What are some of the shortcomings in it that you feel? Uh, yeah. I think, um, you know, I'll focus on the finance aspect of it because, you know, I work uh, more in climate finance. Yeah. But um, the uh, while they have given some commitments in terms of, you know, um, the uh, the uh, increasing the funding for adaptation, uh, mo putting in more concessionary finance, grants and so on. But there is no clarity on who will do the funding, right? Mm. Uh, whether it will be the, the ones who are most responsible for the condition we are in the countries, the developed countries, uh, or is it equally shared? It has to be the one, uh, the developed countries which do more of the funding. And which will be the agency or uh, the, the, the global body which will, which will, uh, you know, uh, which will take in all these funds? Uh, what will be the, the, the implementation mechanism? Uh, wh what are adaptation projects, right? The, the, the taxonomy of that is not, uh, is, has to be worked upon. Um, and how do you actually measure, right? So again, when you define, then you come to measurement. Yes. So the, again, the targets which have been set for measurements, etc., it's quite relaxed if you ask me. So um, they have to encourage countries to define their adaptation projects, adaptation goals, uh, and also measure it consistently uh, so that we know which areas to work upon in different countries. Th this can't be driven at a global scale alone. It has to be individual countries, individual s states, even ULVs, panchayats, etc. Which has to be. It has to come up from. It has to be bottom up as well, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, the, f the I think these are inadequacies which has which have to be worked upon further. Countries also have to individually. I mean, they have to uh, start working upon their uh, you know definitions and start working from a bottom up perspective in order to. Uh, solve this problem, mm. which is adapting to climate uh, change. <laughs> yes. Uh, so one thing uh, that you said outside uh, was very interesting. Um, on uh, sorry, <laughs> I lost the uh, train of thought. Um, About finance. Yeah, there was one example which I thought was very interesting that you said. Uh, the um, sea walls? Yes, no, no, the sea walls. The SEVA, uh, you know, Seva. insurance that, you know, they have come up with for, uh, you know, that's, how, how big is the project? Can you maybe talk a little bit about that? Okay, uh, so uh, the Archdrop Foundation has worked with SEVA, which is a women's self-help group in Gujarat, uh, to create a parametric insurance which is focused on heat, mm -hmm. right? So the SEVA has around 30,000 members and they are covered by this parametric insurance initially through grants but eventually the idea is to make it maybe co-pay or mm. self-sustaining in some other way. So a parametric insurance is basically when certain parameters are met, the payout happens. Okay, In terms of climate for example, if the let's say a parametric insurance which is based on heat can be, the temperature can be a parameter. Mm. If the day's temperature goes beyond 40 degrees centigrade or something, then you can say the insurance payout will happen. So that's a parametric insurance. In this specific case in SEVA, uh, it has been designed that if a certain uh, parameter is met in terms of heat, uh, in terms of humidity, etc. I'm not aware of the exact parameters, but if the woman member misses work because of that, then the payout will happen. Mm. Once the parameters are met, the payout will happen. So that is the idea and I believe that this is a an innovative instrument and which has to be scaled up in India. Yeah. Insurance is uh, lagging in terms of uh, a, uh, innovations in India, right? Mm -hmm. So especially when it comes to the climate front. So I think 
you know, uh, perhaps uh, the uh, IRDAI or the government can can now think about scaling up such uh, parametric insurance schemes, uh, which can uh, which is focused on adaptation, right? Uh, and you know, uh, the 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 thing is, this is replicable across the globe, mm. right? So it is not only uh, limited to India. Once we become a trend center in this, the other the global south and even uh, you know the developed nations can, can probably uh, take an example from us. You know, uh, just sort of curiosity, um, farmers insurance was launched a few years back in India, but there is there have been a lot of hurdles, right, in terms of the payout that the farmers get and how uh, the damage is measured, who measures the damage. Uh, there's a lot of bias also that comes into it. So, uh, because of that also I feel uh, insurance as a way of adaptation is something that's a big scale project to be honest and uh, it, it did not uh, deliver the trust, you know, it does not deliver the trust in people to take insurance and you know, replicate it in like say uh, by the government in say uh, for like you said for labor who are getting impacted by heat or things like this. So what do you have to say about this, uh, you know, how yeah. do you build the trust and make sure that insurance as a uh, means of adaptation works? Yeah. Okay, so that's the difference between uh, insu uh, the mainstream insurance and parametric insurance, right? Uh, insurance, uh, okay, I'm not aware of the details of the farmer's insurance scheme, but I, I would think that it is possible that the onus of proof mm. is on the farmer mm. themselves, right? Mm. So if a farmer's crop is impacted, let's say one farmer's crop is impacted, the other ones is not, the one who is impacted would have to go to the insurance agency and show that, okay, this is my impact and this is how we, you know, uh, this is the damage and so on. And then the, the, the actuarial measurements will happen and then the payout will happen, right? That is difficult to scale, mm. right? Whereas a parametric insurance, if you set the parameters correct, uh, if you set the parameters smartly, mm. There is no correct or wrong parameters, but if you set it smartly, then it becomes easy to measure at scale, mm. right? So you have, let's say, uh, crop insurance that is based on, um, you know, rainfall. Okay, if you say that if the rainfall goes above uh, 300 mm per day for a period of three days, mm -hmm. then the payout will happen automatically. The yeah. farmer does not even have to come and ask for the payout. That is innovation in finance. Exactly. So these. You can measure these. I mean, um, you, you have regular measurements of rain uh, rainfall. If requires, the government can uh, can augment it by setting up more yeah. rainfall measurement stations and so on. And then the payout happens automatically, right? Mm. So it's about reducing. See, you have to set the parameters smartly so that you reduce the cost of measurement. You reduce the and you increase the scale, mm. right? So that is the idea. Yeah. So, what is next for Global Goal of Adaptation? Like, what are you hoping will happen and uh, what do you think will happen in this COP? Okay, uh, so in this COP, uh, you know, almost uh, the the uh, the statement is almost out. There is only one uh, yeah. point of contention which is, you know, uh, separate but... Uh, yeah. was, uh, what is that called? The uh, uh, separate but same or something, sorry. So basically, it says that the developed countries should pay more, yeah. right, uh, rather than the developing countries, which mm. is a fair position to take. But the developed countries have not agreed to it yet. We will know by tomorrow. Mm. But um, in terms of future, it has to be more ambitious. Mm. Okay, so let's talk about uh, you know uh, countries setting up their adaptation targets at a more micro level mm. and me uh, setting up measurement systems, evaluation systems, and so on. Mm. Uh, increasing adaptation financing, mm -hmm. setting up, uh, you know, uh, giving specific targets mm -hmm. for raising adaptation financing and mm -hmm. deploying them, mm -hmm. and so on. So I hope to see more of that in the future. Okay. Yeah. So, you, you, uh, so you think the uh, finalized text will be out right soon? Uh, yeah. Great. And then will the process roll out after that? Like, when will we start discussing? You know, who who puts in how much money? Will that all yeah. come later, before the next COP, or what exactly might happen? Uh, good mm. question. Uh, it's it's all up in the air. I have no <laughs> idea. I have no idea. But uh, look at the. You can probably learn from the LMB fund. Mm. So there was a dedicated push. Loss and damage. Fund. Yeah, yeah, loss and damage fund, 
there was a dedicated push you know the, there was the bridgetown initiative and there was a lot of pressure on uh, the parties to uh, to capitalize upon not mm. just talk about it mm. right so that amount of dedicated pressure ha has to be put mm. on a consistent basis in order to see more funding for adaptation as well okay. right uh, unless you make a noise nobody is going to hear it. Mm. great thanks a lot for your time it was a pleasure talking my to you. pleasure my